Howdy everyone, it's Rob from New Zealand Post here. Today we're going to talk about uploading orders into eShip from a CSV file. This allows you to get all the benefits of integration without any particular technical input. There are two instances when this is pretty useful. Either you're receiving shipments in spreadsheet files already, or if your tool is not supported by eShip in terms of easy integration. In which case, you can simply go into your tool, export your orders into a spreadsheet file, possibly do a bit of manipulation in Excel if you're lacking a few fields such as country, and then import the file. The first thing you need to do if you're just getting started with this is map your CSV file. This allows eShip to understand what each column of data in your file represents. To do this, go to Settings, and then go to CSV File Setup. There are two ways to map a file. The first option is where you use the column numbers. This is quite straightforward. Specify which number column in your spreadsheet file contains which piece of data. I'm going to use a different method for this one, however. If we untick Use Column Numbers, eShip will look for the column name instead. This is a much simpler way to do it. In order to continue, we're going to have to have a look at our spreadsheet file. Open it up in Excel, and then I suggest pinning your window to the opposite side, like so, so that we can do a bit of a comparison. So the first field we need to find is the audit number. In my case, in this file, it's called the invoice number. So I simply copy the column name and paste it into eShip. The next mandatory column is date. As you can see, my file doesn't actually contain a date that the order was created. However, if I leave this blank, eShip will automatically use the local date time if this option is ticked. So it assumes that the order was created today. eShip uses this date to sort the orders on the unshipped screen. Next, the recipient's name. In my file, that's called recipient. I don't have a destination building column in my file, so I simply leave it. eShip will look for a column called destination building, it won't find it, and it'll assume that this field is blank. On to the next few, which are nice and easy. Street. Suburb. City. Postcode. As you can see by my file, this is a domestic list of addresses that are all within New Zealand. So I don't actually have state data. So again, I can just leave that field alone. However, because eShip can be used for international deliveries, you must always specify a country. If your data doesn't contain a country, open the file in Excel first and simply add a column, and then paste in New Zealand into each field, like here. That's all the mandatory ones done. However, there are additional fields that we can include if we have them. This is typically shipping references or the contents of the order. In my file, it looks like this. I have the item name, the value, the weight, and the shipping method used, as well as the quantity of each item. Something very important to note is that if you have one order that contains multiple different items, you can do it like this. As you can see, I have two rows with almost the exact same data in them. The key value is the order number. If eShip imports two rows that have the exact same order number, it will automatically add the item contents as separate rows. So in this case, the customer has ordered one apple and one orange. We'll see what that looks like later. Let's map the fields. Item name is item name in eShip. 
price is item price. Weight is weight. Shipping method is shipping method. This is an important field to talk about. Shipping method is typically the shipping option that your customer has chosen on your website or via your tool. Of course, this method may be some piece of text that doesn't mean anything to eShip implicitly, but we can use the rules feature to automate service selection based on this option. For example, I may only offer the shipping method free shipping to customers who have purchased a very small quantity of items. So my shipping rule might be that if the customer has the free shipping method, their items will be placed in a track pack, and I can assign that service using rules. More on that, however, in another video. Finally, our final field is quantity, which goes here in the QTY field. As you can see, there are many more fields that we can fill in, including delivery instructions, contact details for the customer, which can be used for notifications, and we can even go in depth about how large the packages should be and which carrier and service we want to use for this shipment. Again, we can automate the selection of these items with rules and default package sizes, but if you have the data, you may as well use it. Now that we've mapped the file, we simply click Save. And going forward, we can import any file as long as it has the same columns in this file. Or more specifically, any file that has the same column names. Something important to note is that eShip can only import CSV files. So you'll need to make sure when you save your file in Excel that you're saving it to CSV. One more thing, if you do interact with your file using Excel, it has a nasty habit of removing leading zeros from postcodes and other numbers. To get around this, simply select the column, right click, go to Format Cells, and set the category as text. This will then allow you to add a zero. Much better. Save your file. And now we can import it into eShip. To import the file, we go to the ship page, choose import, and then choose upload CSV file. Select the file, and then click Import CSV. When you see the text file name imported, followed by the name of your file, you can then close this window. The unshipped page will refresh, and your orders will appear. As you can see, I've ended up with five orders. Let's have a look at the one at the bottom, the one with two items in it. As you can see, Here's my apple, and here's my orange. These orders have been automatically assigned my default shipping service, which in this case is the A4 track pack. Because of this, I can print these orders right now, either by clicking on each of them individually, which allows me to change the services and settings if I need to, or I can tick the whole queue with this button here, go to print, and then print shipping. This will do a bulk print, allowing me to print all five labels in a row. Well, that's all for this lesson. Thank you for watching.